This guy is nuts. Is he really making daily recordings of his possible divorce and releasing it as a podcast? They both cheated on each other. She's making six figures and still doesn't contribute to any joint endeavors financially. Why is she still with him? Why is he still with her? I can't wait for the next episode. This helped me be a better wife. So this is how men think. I hate my husband less now. I understand my wife more now. These are some of the listener comments to the Divorce Diaries podcast. All over the map, I know. These anonymous accounts of events should resonate with anyone that has been married, is married, or is preparing for marriage and helps couples avoid pitfalls as they might prepare for marriage. Entire seasons are released on Patreon weeks before anywhere else at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Link in description. Now for today's episode. Did you ever take the time to ask yourself what you wanted in your spouse versus what you needed? I say that because an inventory really needs to be taken and you got to be really honest with yourself like I'm actually going to do this exercise right now because I haven't done it I hadn't done it I don't think this recording shaped up to be this but let me go over to my little dry erase board I have on my refrigerator What do I want and what do I need? Let me make a little chart here. Wants, needs, wants, needs. What did I want? No, because really, fuck that. The wants aren't the important things. What did, what do you need from your spouse? Um, So that word love, it comes up a lot, but I'm, I'm definitely going to go over here and I'm going to write love on the want side. Because needing love, that that is a, I think that's how I felt. Putting love on the need side, because I definitely think that led to some codependency and some very unhealthy connections because love is an emotion, right? So if love is an emotion, then... Love can fluctuate. The amount of love you get could rise and fall. Right? So love should be on the want side. And and I'll say, looking at the want side, you need to acknowledge that I can live without these things. Or not I can live, but my matrimony to my wife could have existed without love because love is something you want. Now, after having been married as long as I have, I can write with confidence on the needs side. I need respect. I need boundaries, but to be more specific, protection. When I say that, it it all kind of goes under respect, but I need you to not discuss our personal information with other people outside of our marriage. I need you to also understand that some people are possibly out to get you, don't like you, or want something from you or want to use you as my wife and you need to protect me, you, our children, our family, our marriage. You need to protect us by not doing certain things. And after seeing everything that happened in our marriage, I understand now that I need respect and let's even get a little deeper, a little, a little graphic, a little nasty. Um, 
if you have kids listening, which you shouldn't. This is a podcast about divorce. That is the unhealthy breaking up. It means it, it could be the healthy breaking up of a marriage and everything like that. But everything that we talk about here and all of my diary entries is, is finance, affairs and sex and children and backstabbing and reparations, forgiveness, sorrow, sadness, happiness. It's just a man's diary about his life that definitely is not going the way that he planned. Anyway, back to our chart. Wants and needs. I have to straddle the line and I'll put this both on both sides. So sex, I'll put that on the want side, but sex, I will actually put that on the need side because, you know, in the vows and you know, I did good for a while there. And um, I mean, I'm pretty good, but, but I've already put in a lot of my diary entries, a lot of the ways that I was not a, a great husband. I was not the best communicator. Um, I mean, I wasn't bad or anything. It's just me being accountable to for my part. And my wife wasn't the best at well, her own things as well. But when on the need side, when I look at sex over there on the need side, it's like we 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 can't go months. And it doesn't mean that there needs to be any you know what bad word that would get you locked up for a long time if you do that to your wife no it's it's no i'm talking about consensual husband and wife there's a little bit of romance a little intimacy and we did the deed that's the sex i'm talking about you can't you can't go a month two months whatever without that because in those vows you know i promised to forsake all others that is directly talking about sex um god was a little nasty you know when he talked about that and he put that in a whatever forsake all others forsake all others that means that act of sex i'm forsaking those other people because i'm just going to be doing it with you and the wants if you think about the sex over there on the want side that means something a little bit more graphic like i said i already warned you get your kids away and if you don't want to listen to something that's going to be kind of gross it's like hey do you guys want to dress up does anyone want to be tied up are you swinging from things? Do you go out to, sp do you do it in public? Do you, to, to, as far as the spice of life is concerned, the spice of sex. Yeah, there you go. That's on the want side, the spice of sex. There you go. But the need side is the connection and physical release for men and the physical acceptance of the man from the woman release and acceptance coming into being penetrated it's it is a biological we need this thing to happen because we are man and wife and there are things that he needs to do and feel and there are things that she needs to do and feel and receive and whatever and that is what's going to connect the two literally there's a dick and there's a vagina. I don't want to say pussy, but I didn't just say pussy, but there's a penis and there's a vagina and those things go together and they're supposed to go together. They're supposed to go together and feel pleasurable. So if you don't have that, that's really all I want. I don't have to list anything else. And I don't even, I'm no longer interested. I've, I've been married long enough now and I understand how much the wants are bullshit. Um, but the respect, protection, sex, um, integrity matters. Um, but I think that's a part of maybe a characteristic and maybe the vetting process. If you go through some things and you figure out if this person is worth, um, being with, you see if they handled themselves typically with integrity or not with integrity. And that can sometimes make all the difference in the world. Um, on this thing so it can smell good in here a little bit um that's it if you're thinking about getting married or if you are married things are going great i hope if they aren't that's okay take some time make your lists as short as possible 
What do you need from your spouse? Do they provide it? And if they do, I would advise you to be happy. Be happy with what your spouse provides. I would have been happy if my needs of respect were constantly met, I was protected, and there was consistent sex. And I'm not going to say that at no point in my marriage or at most points in my marriage, there wasn't respect. No, but when there was the opposite of respect, when I was disrespected, man, it hurt really bad. It really affected me when the boundaries were violated and I wasn't protected and I was exposed to people that meant me and my wife harm. I, um, yeah, I, that's, that's that. I, I, it broke me in a lot of ways and being denied, um, sex because I had a lot of other things on the needs side, you know, financial, this and participation and that, and helping me with the extraneous businesses and doing this, doing that. All those things were over there on the needs side and they shouldn't have been, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have been there. There almost should be a third category. There should be needs, wants, and then hopes or nice to haves. Just like when you look at a job application and it's like, you know, required qualifications and desired qualifications. But all I got is wants and needs. And, uh, you know, if I had it to do all over again, I would just focus very much on the needs. And, um, I'm, and I guess you could say, like, you know, your moral codes sort of match up. I need morally for us to be on the same page. And, you know, that would be something like, you know, hey, sh should we spank the kids? Yeah, I'm going to say it. Should we spank the kids? If both of you come down with no, we should not do that. You guys are in a good place because you agree and you're likely not going to have any disagreements when certain things happen. No one's going to spank the kid. And then there's an argument between the two of you because you think it's okay to spank. The other person doesn't. You guys got to get on the same page with that. It's like, nope, we do spank the kids. You know, kind of sucks for the kids a little bit. But that might require some extra discussion. Yes, we do spank our children. High five. Yay. We both are on board with corporal punishment. So do we use um, pots and pans and extension cords we leave in the oven? It's like, hell no. That's not spanking. That's abuse. Okay. So then you guys fucking talk about that shit. And you're like, no, I just mean like just a little spank on the butt or, you know, a smack on the hand. When they reach for something, they shouldn't. Have. They shouldn't. Oh, okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I can get behind that. Okay, so no objects, right? No belts or anything? Well, no, I, no, I'm not saying any belts. I don't think we need to go that far. It's fine. Okay, cool. Then you're on the same page. You guys like have the same sort of moral compass, moral trajectory pointed due north. Maybe that's on the need side. But I guess right now it's just respect, boundaries, protection, and sex. That is the things that I need. And um, there's a lot of manosphere stuff that's out there now. And just a lot of people, a lot of men are really angry. A lot of women are really angry. Um, really confused. There's a lot of red pill, blue pill, this, that talk. And, um, I don't know that we're going to come back together. Um, there's, there's going to have to be some sort of radical change. And I think that the protections that civilization is providing us right now might have to be removed so that we can come back to a place where we depend on each other and we aren't so quick to leave. Um, I think the divorce rate is at, um, oh gosh, um, the divorce filing rate is somewhere about 78 to 80% of women file for divorce. Now, back in a time where women needed the protection of a man, like he's got to by the gun, by the ranch, by the, like, give her sons that can grow up and protect her and all those things. That type of provisioning and protection was necessary for the woman's survival. So, yes, on the one hand, maybe she put up with, quote unquote, in 2021 standards, she put up with more from her husband, but also she was protected um, because her mortality was uh, before her every day.
So maybe she had a respect and a reverence for the things that he did that would protect and provision and provide for her. But now things are very different. People are living in climate controlled, gated, entried apartment buildings and townhome complexes and all of those things. And the protection and even the fixing of the sink isn't needed by the man because there is a maintenance man and there is a concierge service and there are doors and whatever. There are places where you can complain and there are managers and security force and cameras everywhere. So a woman may feel protected without a man. So the need side of the ledger, the respect, and the protection won't necessarily may not be there. And the salaries of men and women both are increasing and everyone can provide for themselves. So that whole providing thing, a man kind of a good man, I would say, kind of feels he needs to do or is charged to do a woman is able to do for herself. And that's not the, her fault or anything. It's just, the, it's just, I'm just mentioning the state of things. And that's how it is. A woman doesn't really need a man. And if she doesn't really need a man, why would she feel a need to respect a man in the confines of marriage? I'm not saying in the traditional sense, I'm just saying in the sense of respect, if the real reason, the only real reason you need a man is to have children, if you want that thing, why do you need to respect so much? And why do you need to give and provide sex because technically that's what a woman would provide to a man. If I look at my needs side, she would provide him with respect to, because we are fragile and we've got egos and we're men. So it's like, yeah, you want to feel respected. You don't want to come home and say, Hey, you're late. I got this honey do list. I needed you here earlier. So you could get to this. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. He's sort of being demoralized a little bit, a little bit humiliated and it's okay but it might not be okay for him. And the moment that he may get respect, I'm not saying catering to, cowering to, or anything like that. The moment he may get respect from a woman. Like I remember something happened, um, and then my wife did this. You know, this was one of the reasons why, which I say she, she definitely respected me once. She definitely respected me once. I um I did the super chivalrous thing and I opened the door for one of our early dates. And I was driving and as I'm hustling, running around to the driver's side door so I can get in, she's leaning over and she's grabbing the handle and she's opening the door, stretching herself across the seat and pushing with her fingertips. Uh, push. And she's, I'm like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck just happened? Did she just, she didn't have to do that. She could have just sat there and let me struggle, but she didn't. She reached over, granted, yes, that's one thing. Maybe it's small to me at that time. And even to this day, it's huge because whenever I really want to not think that I'm being a total fucking idiot by thinking about reconciling with my wife it's things like that that get me there it's things like that where I can contrast how poorly she's treated me how badly she's behaved and how the, the awful things that she has done obviously I've done my share of awful, bad, disgusting, jerkish, fucked up things. But what I'm saying is having that contrast of, man, I remember that time when I remember that time when looking at the board, I remember that time when my needs were met. Why? I remember that time with this person, I felt my needs were being met. 
And sometimes I didn't do the right thing when my needs were being met. Sometimes I didn't say thank you. Sometimes I acted like I wanted more. Sometimes I acted like having my needs met wasn't good enough. Sometimes I just was ungrateful. Sometimes I... We all are. We all are. All I'm saying is... I know now what I wanted versus what I needed. And at one point, I had what I needed. But that wasn't good enough. Wow. That was the Divorce Diaries podcast. The Daily Saga will continue tomorrow. The full season's episodes are on Patreon now. Subscribe for early access. Click the Patreon link in the description. Hopefully, these entries help our anonymous recorder as a form of his own personal therapy. That's his hope and his intention. Will these recordings of life's curveballs lead this family to the best resolution in the end? We'll keep listening. New episodes are released daily on all podcast players, but all episodes are available on Patreon at Divorce Diaries Podcast Patreon page. Until next time.